Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, the place for techies and non-techies who work in the techie world whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We're here to provide solutions that will help both the techie and non-techie live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, this is Joanne Victoria with another awesome episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. The Sanity Project Podcast is a platform for experts in the personal development and IT communities to share their wisdom, expertise, and solutions that will help the IT pro and others live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Our guest today is going to be talking about soft skills, specifically active listening. Her name is Sandy Chernoff, and she has practiced dental. She has practiced dental hygiene since 1968, and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in health education. As a soft skills trainer and consultant, Sandy has taught a variety of courses for dental groups, BCIT, Capilano College, University of the Fraser Valley, BC Institute of Charter Accountants, and so on. Since 1995, Sandy has presented soft skills training to audiences in Vancouver, Victoria, Powell River, Kelowna, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Regina, Toronto, Montreal, New York, and many more yet to come. Her energetic, humorous, and interactive presentation style provides her sessions with variety and pace, making the atmosphere most conducive to retentive learning. What Sandy is going to talk without with us today is active listening, which is the most important communication skill. Welcome to the show, Sandy Chernoff. How are you today? I'm good, Joanne. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, With most of the sessions that I provide for my clients, they're all customized. But because listening is so important, it's often the cornerstone of any of the things that I teach. So whether it's sales strategies or customer service or leadership development or teamwork or team managing or managerial training or any of those kinds of things, the cornerstone is always communication and I always start with active listening. People think that they're good listeners. They also think that they're good communicators because we've been doing it since we were born. But the truth is, it's very complex. And if we don't understand those complexities, we end up with conflict and resentment and disappointment and complaining and miscommunication, all things which cause us stress. And the last thing we need is more stress. So active listeners show speakers that they have been heard and understood. And when someone does that, you feel so respected because oftentimes we're not respectfully listened to. And so it can greatly enhance our relationships. And that's why it's very important. So listening means that we receive information unfiltered and we respond appropriately to that message. And we show the speaker that we actually, quote unquote, got the message. And When we show that, then we show the speaker that we actually did listen to them respectfully. And, you know, it's very important. But, again, one of the things that I like to tell my my attendees is this. Hearing is an ability. So unless someone is hearing impaired, we can all hear. Listening, on the other hand, is an art. And, of course, it involves our ears to begin with, but it also involves our eyes, our heart, and our mind to interpret all aspects of the message. We get to see the body language. We get to listen to the tone of voice, to the volume of the voice. And then we have to use our minds to process this information and decide what conclusion we're supposed to come to. But if the speaker doesn't get feedback from the listener, unless you're a mind reader, you have no idea what's going on in their head. And just because someone is looking at you and looks like they're listening, you have no idea what they've done with what you've told them or if they've actually even heard all of it. And that's why it's so important to get that feedback. But here's the thing that happens. The speaker needs to be aware that There are reasons why people don't listen very well. There actually are specific reasons. First of all, they don't focus on the message. So why don't they focus on the message? Well, here's the thing. Your brain processes data at between 800 and 1,000 words per minute. Most people speak at about 150 words per minute. I speak a little bit faster, but certainly not up to 800. And so what happens is that your brain gets a little bit bored 
And I often say to people, have you ever been sitting in a class or even sitting having a conversation with someone and all of a sudden you realize, oh my goodness, I haven't heard anything they said for the last 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because you started to wool gather in your head. So again, unless you're a mind reader, you don't know if the person is actually staying focused on your message. And just because they look like they're looking, they're listening to you because they're looking at you, again, passive listening doesn't tell us where they're actually getting the message. And again, sometimes when we're having a conversation, we could be in a physical setting that's not very good. What I mean by that is, are there business machine noises? Is there traffic? Is there construction? Are there people walking in and out? Are there side conversations? Are there, you know, different kinds of things that can be very distracting to the person that you're having this conversation with? And that will make it more difficult for them, again, to focus on that message. And once more, sometimes people will come to have a conversation with you and you don't know what their physical state is. Are they tired? Are they hungry? Are they too hot? Are they too cold? Do they have a problem that they're dealing with? All those things are going to supersede your message. And that's when they're going to do that wool gathering in their head while you're talking. In addition, sometimes we use language that is not familiar to the listener. For example, when I first got my website... And then I needed to have work done on it. So my daughter hooked me up with someone who was a much better web designer than who I originally used. But he started talking tech speak to me. So I stopped him. And I said, Nathaniel, if you speak English to me, I will be able to figure out exactly what you need. But what you're talking about right now, you might as well be speaking Martian. I have no idea what you're asking me. And it takes way too much energy to focus on someone speaking to us using a lot of words that we don't understand. Again, for example, if I talk to my patients when I was practicing dental hygiene using dental terminology, like if I talk to them about carious lesions or calcareous deposits or purulent exudate or the distal of tooth 25, I mean, you know, they'd look at you like you landed from the moon. They have no idea. But if you talk to them about decay in their teeth or tartar and plaque that's collecting on their teeth or an infection in their gum that when I press on it, pus comes out or, you know, something like that, then they're going to have a far better idea of what you're trying to tell them. So you would say that the speaker should make their words more understandable to exactly. everyone. Okay. I mean, if you're talking to a tech audience, or you're talking to a dental audience, or you're talking to a medical audience, sure. or you're talking to an engineering audience, then you can use your terminology because they're going to understand it. But if you're talking to a lay audience that doesn't have the background for those things, then choose your words more carefully because otherwise they're going to tune out. In addition, sometimes people will come to a conversation with a preset idea of what you're going to tell them, or they'll think that what you're telling them is beneath them, or they know it all already. And when that happens, a wall comes down inside their head, and anything you say is going to bounce off. Now, they're making assumptions, and we all know that assuming makes an ass out of you and me, mm -hmm. and it gets us into a lot of trouble. But people do it all the time. And obviously, if they come with this preset idea, they're going to miss something that you said because they didn't think it was going to be important. But, you know, you did. And it's because they decided that they knew everything. Now, the other thing that happens is, so those are the things that the speaker needs to be aware of. What listeners often do, and they think they're being helpful, but they're actually not. They'll jump in and give advice you know, or give suggestions when the person is telling you something. You know, if someone has known something for a long time or dealt with a problem for a long time, do you think that something that pops into your head right now is not something they've already thought about if they've been dealing with this for, for a while? Sure. And it's just, it's annoying and it's actually rude, you know, where they jump in and go, well, you should talk to someone or why haven't you done this? Or don't worry, everything will be all right. Well, you have a crystal ball. How do you know everything's going to be all right? <laughs> or you criticize them. Oh, you should have done this, you know, a long time ago. Really? Uh, you know, that's not going to make them feel too kindly towards you. Or you interrupt them with something that's totally unrelated. Oh, gee, that's a really nice necklace you have on, Joanne. Where did you get that? You know, and then when we do that, sometimes both the speaker and the listener forget what was going on before. Or people jump in with related stories. And oftentimes when you examine the stories, they're not that related and nobody cares. So it's better to just focus and listen to the person. And of course, you should make some eye contact because if we're not making eye contact, for sure they don't think we're listening. So, so how, just... No, go ahead. Okay. Um, 
how do you handle, how do you suggest people handle when they only deal by telephone? For example, I only communicate with my clients and prospects by phone. Um, you know, I try to make sure that we're both on the same wavelength before I start speaking. But it's, you know, and I usually don't have any problems, but how can you be sure that people are listening when you're on the phone? The only way you can make sure that the message you sent was, in fact, the one that was received is to get some feedback. So what you can do is, and you don't need to do it in a nasty way, you can say, listen, before we hang up, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. What do you think I'm expecting from you? Right. Because otherwise, you know, we walk away, and I often say to people, have you ever given instructions or directions to someone and walked away going, well, I fulfilled my responsibility, I told them what I wanted. Yeah, but did you find out what they heard? Because oftentimes when we give instructions, we don't get what we want. And why? Because we didn't check to find out what that person heard, how they processed that information, and what conclusion they came to, because maybe the conclusion they came to was very far from what we were expecting. So if we don't get that reinforcement in terms of, of how this message was received, we're going to be disappointed. Yeah, the feedback loop is so vital. Well, and the thing is this, that, and that's where you, know, where you show the speaker that you respectfully listen. It's the summarizing piece, which is that middle part of active listening, where you tell them, well, so far I've heard that you, know, you, you did this or you did that or you want me to do this or you want me to do that. I'll give you a quick example. I, I was going to be doing a managerial training program for a big tech company in downtown Vancouver. And it took me, with the help of the HR manager, almost two years to get an appointment with the president because he was the owner of the company because he was the one that was going to make the decision. But she told me that he, he's a nice man, but he's an egocentric micromanager. So I figured there's no point in me coming in and telling him what I know because he'll discount me right away. So instead I came in, I introduced myself, and I said, Stefan, why don't you tell me what you think the problems are? So he started. And about halfway through, I stopped. I said, I just want to stop you because I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, so far, you told me this. And here's what I can do about that. And then you mentioned this. You know, so I sort of went through. And I said, is there more? Oh, yes. You know, and then he carried on. So at the end, I said, OK, so how do you feel about you know, what we've discussed? He said, well, I need that proposal on my desk tomorrow morning. And I said, OK, no problem. You'll have it. And thank you very much for your time. I know you're a very busy man. So I knew ahead of time what all the problems were, but I wanted to make sure that he also felt that the problems were the same as HR, and he did. Good. And I sent him the proposal as soon as I got home because I already had it. And the next morning, the HR manager phoned me. She said he signed off on it. I said, good, now we need to schedule it. So showing him that I was respectfully listening to him made him more comfortable. I think that's why he agreed to let me come in and do this training. So, you know, and you can do things like, oh, well, it sounds like you're really upset about that, or it sounds like you've done a lot of things, you know, to fix this, so how are you feeling about it? And while I was listening to you, one idea popped into my head that you didn't mention. Would you like me to share that with you? Because at that point, you've already listened. You showed them that you did listen, and then you can offer a suggestion to help them problem solve it or whatever. But don't jump in until they're finished, because it's rude, it's inappropriate, and Nobody really cares because they're busy, you know, telling you their thing. And in addition, we don't want to come with biases and judgment and whatever. Open your mind and just listen with an open mind when somebody's telling you something. Focus on what they're saying. Because if we let our judgment and our biases come in, we're not going to really hear what they say. And other people are entitled to their perspective. You have yours, they have theirs. In fact, the summarizing piece can be used as simple conflict resolution. Because I'm sure that all of us have experienced this. Have you ever listened to two people arguing? Of course. And what's funny is sometimes they're saying the same things. They're not listening to each other. No. Because what they're doing is thinking about what they're going to say next. And if you stop them and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. I want you to tell George your perspective. And George, I want you to listen very carefully because when Joanne's finished, you're going to tell her what you heard. So, you know, you tell George and... He appears to be listening, and then he starts telling you, and you look at him, and you go, that isn't what I said. Okay, George, Joanne's going to tell you again. This time you need to listen more carefully. 
So this time he listens carefully. And then I say, okay, that's good. And you tell him, yep, that's what I pretty much where I was coming from. I go, George, now you tell Joanne your perspective on this. And you didn't want to have to listen twice, so you listened very carefully and told him what he heard. And I said, okay, now the two of you can see that you actually have some common ground. There are some areas that you need to decide that either you'll make a compromise on or you'll agree to disagree. But it's good to know where the other person is coming from because then we can deal with things more effectively. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a way of dealing with things that allow each person to have their say. And if we look around the room when I have a group of people and I say, okay, look around the room. Mother Nature gave us a very strong message. We all have two ears and one mouth. So it's kind of a gentle reminder that we should listen twice as much as we speak because the truth is you can't learn anything when you're talking. And the only time you can learn things is when you listen because if you listen, you find out what matters to other people, what they're looking for, what their concerns are, so on and so forth. And particularly as a manager or a leader of any sort, if you don't know what your people are looking for, how are you going to provide them with what they need? And it's the same thing with customers. If you don't listen to your customers, how are you going to know what they are looking for and what their concerns are and how you can take care of them and all those kinds of things? So we need to actually focus and listen to people if we're going to be successful in the things that we do. So what does active listening actually look like? Well, first of all, we have to hear. So we have to open-mindedly and without judgment pay attention so that we can hear the message that the person is delivering. The next thing we have to do is we have to interpret that message. And this is where misunderstandings can occur and why we need to sometimes have a little discussion or ask more questions for better clarity. Then we have to evaluate. In other words, we have to decide what to do with the information that we received. And finally, the best thing to do is to respond to the person. Use verbal and visual responses to let the speaker know whether you have gotten the message and what sort of reaction you're taking as a result of this message. So if we can have that exchange so that we, in fact, find out that it, the message we sent was or was not received as we intended, then we can clarify or whatever we have to do to make sure that everybody's going to walk away happy and get what they want and what they need. Now, there's one other piece to think about. Whenever there's an emotional exchange, it doesn't happen with regular speech, but whenever there's an emotional exchange, when someone is upset, they're scared, they're anxious, they're whatever, only 7% of the message is verbal. It's 38% tonal and 55% nonverbal, the expression, your stance, your gestures. So if those nonverbal parts of the message do not support and reinforce the verbal part, they will obliterate it. So you have to be very careful of the message you're sending. And I tell people, if you're going to have a confrontation with someone, what I call a difficult conversation, I would practice it in front of a mirror and even get some feedback from someone in your family to find out how you sound and how you look because you can actually invite more conflict if you don't do it in a respectful way. And we have to be honest and respectful when we're having some kind of a confrontational conversation. Otherwise, it's going to be a lose-lose. And people need to understand. Can you give me an example of that briefly? Yes. So um, I was giving a workshop actually in Edmonton, and there was one woman who gave an example that the office she worked in had a very nasty receptionist. And she had all these rules and regulations, and she would call you out in front of a whole room full of patients if you didn't do something the way she wanted it done. And she wanted to, you know, have a converse, uh, a confrontation with her. And I said, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to calm yourself down, you have to decide how you're going to deal with this, and you have to be prepared for any of the comebacks she's going to throw at you because she's going to deny it all. And you need to stay calm and respectful because if you start yelling back at her, you're done. Mm -hmm. And so I had her come up to the front to role play it with me, Joanne. And even the way she walked up the front, everybody in the room said, you're angry before you start. <laughs> because you could just tell again by her body language that she was going to attack me. And that doesn't work. So you have to really remember that you have to be honest and respectful when you're having a difficult conversation with someone. And you have to pay attention to the tone of your voice, the look on your face. I mean, if you're standing there with your arms crossed or you're poking your finger at them or you have an angry look on your face, then they're going to become confrontational. And that's not going to help you in the situation. 
So it's a matter of really understanding that if we're going to be successful when we have something difficult to resolve, we need to stay calm and respectful and honest and not let them get our goat and not lower ourselves to their level. It's the same thing if you're a customer service person. And of course, when somebody has a problem, who do they yell at? They yell at the customer service person. So if the customer service person, what I tell them to do is don't take it personally. It's not about you. What you have to do is zip up your Teflon cape and just let all that crap slide off because it's not about you. You have to stay calm and respectful and tell them that you're there to help them and give them feedback so that you can decide exactly what the problem is and make sure that you've understood it clearly. And if they keep yelling at you, you can maybe ask them to stop yelling, that you're really here to help them and, and all this yelling is making it hard for you to focus on finding out what the problem is. doesn't mean they'll stop, but they might. Right. Especially if you do it in a very nice way. But we have to pay attention. It's even with our kids, Joanne, you know, you might be scared about something and so you'll be gruff with your kid and so they'll just think, Mommy, you're yelling at me. No, I'm not. I want you to... Well, we are yelling at them because we're, we're nervous. Sure. So it's a matter of how, how are we getting our message across? Are we doing it in a nice way? I have a slide that I show and it says, just make sure that the message you send is the one received and it shows a dog sitting there looking very proud of himself beside, beside a big pile of, of poo and pee. And, of course, the master is standing there with his hands over his face going, oh, my God, I said sit, you idiot. So, in other words, the dog didn't hear him properly either. Oh, dear. So, well, it's just, it's just sort of a funny thing to let people know that you may think you've sent the right message, but not necessarily. So, to sort of summarize, basically, if we're going to listen – we have to stop talking. We have to listen fully by focusing on what the person is saying. If we're not clear on what the message is, we can ask some clarifying questions. And it doesn't hurt to ask questions so that we are clear on what's going on. In addition, provide that feedback by summarizing back to the speaker what you heard. And again, come to the conversation with an open mind, not with biases or judgment or anything. Try and leave your mind open so that you actually can hear what they're telling you. And if possible, keep a pleasant look on your face. I mean, people are more inclined to talk to people if they look pleasant than if they look grouchy or angry. And it's just a matter of paying attention to what other messaging we're sending. And we have to pay attention to those nonverbals, both from us and from them, because if they're sending nonverbals, we might want to get clarification. And always you want to respect your speaker and you show them you've respected them by giving them that feedback of what you've heard. And if we're listening carefully, we shouldn't jump to conclusions until they're finished. Because, again, that means that we've probably put down our wall. Oh, well, I know what they're going to say, so I don't need to listen anymore or whatever. Well, wrong, because you might miss something important. And again, it's our opportunity to learn something because we are listening to another person's point of view. And one of the things I tell people with regard to customer service, for example, is thank the person for bringing this problem to your attention because not only are we going to fix it for them, but now that we know that this is something that can happen, we're going to try and do something to make sure that nobody else experiences this same situation. So thank them very much for bringing this to your attention. They might be a bit surprised at that, but it's actually true. It can be very helpful to know that something is a problem and we don't need to have it repeated. Correct. So, you know, again, people need to remember that listening is not easy. It's something that we need to really put some thought into and some focus into because it is very easy to have your mind drift away. And even in certain situations, like I have a little video that I show you at, and it shows the CEO talking to her management team about an upcoming merger. And you get to hear what's going on in their heads. And very few of them are listening to her. One guy is looking at her and going, gee, that's a really nice scarf she has on. My wife's birthday is next week. I should find out where she got that scarf so I can get one for my wife. Really? That's what you're thinking while the CEO is telling you this good stuff? And another one is sitting there with a report that they have. And she's going, oh, my God, we have to go over this same stuff again, you know, over and over. Why do we have, you know, so in other words, she figures this is below her. She's heard it all before, so she quits listening. And you know, there's, there's just all these things that we don't normally get to see, but you get to hear it with, with this person because they're, they're giving you what's going on in the people's heads. And again, you know, there are, there are things that we need to pay attention to and there are things that we need to discount. 
And if we're actually going to be listening, then we need to not be judging. And we need to ask for clarification if we're not clear on things. I mean, there's just so many pieces that a lot of people don't use. And that's why we end up with so much miscommunication and so much conflict. And it's not necessary. If we know the right strategies and if we actually implement them and practice them on a regular basis, we're going to have much better relationships in all aspects of our lives because that's soft skills are not just good for business i mean of course they are good for business but they actually help us in all our relationships in every aspect of our lives whether it's at home or it's in volunteer work or it's in our business if we know how to communicate effectively with people if we can actually listen to them and understand where they're coming from we're going to have a far easier time dealing with them and dealing with them successfully and that's why it's so key to really be a good listener and really pay attention to people so that we can find out what they're looking for and what matters for them. And, you know, when we have these exchanges, you don't want to do it too quietly or make the messages too complex, you know, or any of those kinds of things. It's just really important to make sure that the message you sent is the one received. And that's why feedback is so, so important. Well, the message I'm going to send now to our audience is that they re-listen to this podcast. <laughs> but seriously, I recommend this just about every time I have a guest on because I know well and true that they will hear what, what relates to them and what's important to them, but they might be missing things. So I would say everybody re-listen to this and share it at work, at home. Let others listen to what you listen to and discuss this podcast because Sandy Chernoff has spoken to us today about active listening and all the tools required for that. You need your entire body to listen. You need to listen not just with your ears, but with your heart, with your mind, with your soul. That If you really care about creating some solutions to whatever you're discussing and having some respectable outcomes. So share this with others, re-listen to this over and over again, because Sandy has provided you with boatloads of information. And if you need more information, you can go to Sandy's website at softskillsforsuccess.com. For those of you who need to hurry, hurry, hurry and get an answer from her, you can email her at sandy at softskillsforsuccess.com. And I want to thank Sandy Chernoff for being here today because this has been a really profound, uh, full uh, podcast. There's a lot of information in here. And I, even though I take notes because that's part of the way I function, it comes from my synapses connect right into the paper. And yet I re-listen to these podcasts as well to see what I have missed. So it's Sandy Chernoff's soft skills expert, softskillsforsuccess.com. And I thank you so very much for being here today, Sandy. This has been a great gift to our audience. Well, it's my pleasure, Joanne. And also there are some little freebie PDFs that they can download, and one of them is on active listening. So it actually, it's, a, it's teasers for my book. There you go. And her book is called Five Secrets to Effective Communication. And I know it is available on Sandy's website, softskillsforsuccess.com. And I wish everyone a great day today. Take care, everyone. And thank you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to askjoannevictoria.com to listen to more podcasts and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Work-Life Balance. That's askjoannevictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.